Hello, my name is Daniel Kitson and I'm a musician in Adelaide, Australia. I'm making this video to explain a little bit about how I was looping with Ableton specifically. So we'll look through uh, my default kind of template and uh, yeah, a little bit about how I use it and kind of build up my loops. So firstly, I am using Ableton Live Lite. Uh, this is the version that comes free with a lot of MIDI hardware that you might buy from the shop. Um, so my key MIDI keyboard that I have came with this for free. Um, and I thought I would explain how to use it in this way, um, just so you know you can be a bit more cost effective with your music making, because you know so many things are so expensive. So it's nice to have something that you don't need to pay a lot for, um, and it's also just what I've been using for all my looping sessions. I've just been using the light version because uh, I'm a bit of a cheapskate. It doesn't mean if you have standard or suite, then you'll be able to do everything I'm talking about in this one. The same software works the same way. You can probably do a bit more of the advanced things that uh, I want to be able to do. Unfortunately, though, it is pretty specific to Ableton. I don't think other, other doors, other digital audio workstations work exactly the same way in terms of the looping. I've done a little bit with Logic Pro and I think that works quite differently. So this is just for Ableton, sorry. <laughs> right, so in my default template, I have most of the tracks set to record guitar. So five of them are guitar, one for bass, uh, one for MIDI drums, one for MIDI synth. Um, they have different effects and stuff on them um, based for the sound I'm trying to achieve uh, and I'll go through that in a little bit. So the view that I'm using in Ableton is session view. Um, so you might have seen arrangement view and with arrangement view it's maybe more for like writing songs. So this is a bit of a thing that I was recording before. Um, but yeah, a bit more maybe full fully fledged productions and songs you might want to do with arrangement view. The session view is a bit better for live performing and you can switch between them uh, in the top right corner where my mouse is cool uh, the vertical lines of the session horizontal lines are the arrangement and you can switch between them with the tab on the keyboard as well so in session view you can see all these clips these little boxes are where the clips get recorded um, and the rows that they're in uh, are the scenes so you can launch a different scene which is a different selection of clips yeah, okay. And each clip um, correlates with this track and you can only have one clip playing from each track. But you can still have a bunch of clips recorded um, down down here, but they line up in scenes and, and yeah, you can only play one at a time for each track. Cool, so that's most of that stuff. Looking in the top left corner, um, we've got tempo up here. So I've set it at 110, 120 is kind of the standard. Uh, so if you want something that feels fast, go higher than that. If you want something that feels low, go lower. And then we've got time signatures here as well. So uh, we've got 4-4 four, four at the moment. Again, kind of standard. You might want to do 3-4. You might want to do 6-8, something like that. Yep. Uh, you could do lots of odd time signatures too. So 7 or 9 or, or whatever else you want in between. Um, yeah, cool. And then looking right along, I'm just going to move this back to 4-4. Four, four. Uh, we've got the click. So... Uh, on, it just means that you're hearing that clip to help you perform with, and off, nothing, but it's still playing, yeah. And then right next to that, we have kind of the quantize options, so uh, by default, Ableton will put everything at one bar, so uh, it will only start recording at the start uh, of the next bar, and it will only finish recording or launch the clip uh, at the beginning of the next bar as well. You could do smaller than that, you can do longer than that as well, so you can do uh, up to 8 bars it's got there, and then you can go down to a 30 second note, which is a bit ridiculous. Um, but yeah, you can do that. I tend to just keep it at one bar though, I think that's kind of the easiest uh, option for myself. Okay, so when I'm actually looping, uh, I just start with one thing, um, then I might start thinking about harmonies, might start thinking about bass line, chords, uh, a bit of a groove kind of starts building from there. So let's start with maybe a guitar track. So I'll hit arm, that's really important, otherwise it won't really do anything. Um, I've also got it set here with the monitor. Auto means you'll hear it when it's armed. If it's off, you can see that it's doing stuff. Or you can, yeah, you can see that it's doing stuff, you can't hear it. Auto, you can see what it's doing and hear it, and you can tell because it's got the colors. Okay, so I don't really have much of an idea what I want to do. I'm just going to hit record and we'll see what happens. Higher guitar 
bar bar, the contrast against that. So yeah, the corner, very good. Not on that one. Okay. feel good in that kind of area. That kind of thing can be nice. Oh, actually, wait, hang on. Yeah, flat seven, love it. Anyway, cool. So uh, we've got our basic kind of thing and it, yeah, very happy, very major that um, I was kind of just exploring. Uh, so from here, you might start thinking about a second section, maybe something that contrasts to this a little bit. Um, so thinking, okay, this is quite major, maybe a bit more upbeat. Immediately what's contrasting to that is maybe something a bit more minor, a bit more, uh, not slow because we can't really change the tempo, um, but yeah, a bit more lower energy. Yeah, and, and you can play with even more things than that as well. Maybe you want want to change keys or something. Um, yeah, modulate the weight of something else or play with the layers, take things out, add more things in. Uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff is available and do it, you know, experiment with it. It's really, really good to do. If this does interest you, then uh, yeah, please check out my other looping sessions on this channel. I've got a playlist with all of them, kind of one after the other, so kind of easy to find, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, if, you, if this sounds interesting, then check that out, because this is where I've explored all of that before. Let's talk about the effects that I have going on. Each of these guitar tracks, exactly the same. I've got this amp simulator, I've got cabinet simulator, and I've got a compressor. And it's each of them the same. Um, if I didn't have my pedals, I would have a reverb on there probably, but I've got my reverb pedal, uh, which again, I talked about in uh, the other video, um, which yeah, kind of takes care of that. Cool, I've also got the bass here, which just has bass amp simulator, compressor again. The MIDI stuff, I don't really have any effects on. I don't think it needs it, unless you're trying to achieve a 
maybe a certain thing, then you know, go for it, of course. Um, but for me, I haven't really found the need for that yet. Uh, in terms of recording this stuff, let's think a bit, a bit about that. So let's me uh, stop all those. Okay, so now not playing. Right, silence. So um, I'm going to hit record. So now in our arrangement view, it's all kind of grayed out. It's a little bit ready-ish. So that just means it's going to start recording when we're launching clips. Um, so let's maybe just launch the drums. Okay, beginning of the next bar. Cool, so now that's playing. I don't know why I pointed. Uh, now that's playing in the, in the arrangement view. Okay, I don't think the drums are too different, so I'm just going to launch them. I think I'll go away. One, two, bass next. Now the guitar was shorter loops, so I could actually just add them on. Four. Okay, and yeah, again, this is all kind of layering. Pointed again. It's all layering in the arrangement view. Okay, and then it would record. like a fully recorded performance um, you then click this little button up here where my mouse is oh there it is little red button makes it treatable like a, a maybe another song so you can um, edit each of these and, and cut them up and do all that kind of stuff um, or more the post editing kind of thing um, and then from there I might chuck on some yeah maybe some more compression or EQ or anything if I think I need that um, and yeah, maybe a bit of like panning or something like that. But that's where the mixing kind of stuff comes in and you can use any other mixing techniques that you might be aware of or whatever. So again, this is just a picture of what I'm doing. Um, it will change in future, I'm sure. Uh, and I've got a few ideas I'll let you guys know of just in case you do know how to do them, in which case I'll be very interested to find out how. Um, so one of them is using a mixture of the looper device um, in Ableton with the uh, session view looping. Because I think with the looper device, you can be a bit more flexible with your tempo and timing a little bit more, which is maybe the next level that I want to explore. Because I can do all the layers and I can do all the notes and effects and stuff. Like that kind of makes sense to me, but I don't, haven't yet figured out how to do different time signatures mid recording or different tempo or anything like that. Uh, another thing would be using randomness as well, like as a general concept. So. With synth stuff, um, especially digital synth stuff, you can pretty easily achieve like chance, kind of uh, maybe arpeggiation or, any, or something like that. Um, and I haven't explored that too much. So that's just an idea maybe for you guys to pick up. Um, and if that makes sense to you, then go for it. And I'd be really interested to hear what you make with that. Anyway, thank you for listening. I hope these are some interesting ideas and you know maybe some helpful tips, helps you get into it a little bit. Um, and if not, I hope it's just at least listen, uh, interesting to listen to. Thanks again for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any other ideas and if this video is helpful or interesting. And uh, yeah, have a good one.